are, we're going to look at the history of the Temple Mount, the most important site on earth, according to the Word of God, the headquarters for the future millennial kingdom of Christ. God placed Jerusalem at the center of the nations to be a light to the world. We see that in Ezekiel 5, verse 5. And the divine history of the Temple Mount begins in 1870 B.C. when God instructed Abraham to uh, go to Mount Moriah and offer his son Isaac upon that mountain. And when he got there, he was prepared to do that, but God provided a ram instead. And all of that, of course, was beginning to point to the coming of Christ as the Lamb who taketh away the sin of the world. The next major event on the Temple Mount was in the 10th century B.C. when Solomon built the first temple. According to the revelation that was given to David, and on the day that it was dedicated, the glory of God filled that temple. In 586 B.C., that temple was destroyed by the Babylonian armies under the great king Nebuchadnezzar as a punishment for Israel's sin and Israel's apostasy. And God had warned them repeatedly through the prophets, but they disobeyed God and the temple was destroyed. Seventy years later, the Jews, some of the Jews, returned from the Babylonian captivity and the second temple was built after the Jews returned under the leadership of Nehemiah and Zerubbabel, the prophets Zechariah and Haggai. But the glory of God never filled that temple. It was later beautified by Herod. But before that, in 534 B.C., Daniel prophesied of a vile person who would desecrate the second temple. And that vile person came in the form of Antiochus Epiphanes, a forerunner of the future Antichrist. And Epiphanes desecrated the temple just as Daniel prophesied and uh, uh, placed abominable things there, sacrificed pigs, set up idols in that temple. In 63 B.C., the Roman armies conquered Jerusalem, and the emperor Pompey boldly and brashly rode his horse into the Jewish temple, that second temple. In 19 B.C., just a few years before Jesus was born, Herod the Great who was a great builder, but he was also a great hater of God, enlarged the second temple and also polluting it with pagan imagery. Then in 3 B.C. or thereabouts, Jesus, as an infant, was presented in that temple to God. Mary's offering of purification was made in that second temple. In about 30 A.D., Jesus prophesied, that that temple would be destroyed and not one stone but would be left standing upon another. That year, when Jesus was crucified, the veil in that temple was rent from top to bottom, signifying that the way into the very presence of God has been made clear through the blood of Christ. And then in 70 AD, Jesus' prophecy was fulfilled when the armies of Rome came And they destroyed the temple and they uh, pulled down the stones and literally cast those stones off of the temple mount and they crashed down to the pavement below. A coin was struck by the Romans celebrating the destruction of Jerusalem and uh, depicting Israel as a sad slave sitting under a palm tree and weeping because of the destruction of her country guarded by the Roman emperor. Every year since the destruction of the first temple, in fact, the Jews have had a feast memorializing the uh, destruction of the temple and looking forward to the rebuilding of the temple. And they have done that again ever since the destruction of the second temple. And uh, they meet today at the Wailing Wall and they pray and they look forward to the rebuilding of the temple. In 82 AD, the Arch of Titus was built in Rome. And we mention that in the context of the history of the Temple Mount because that arch memorialized the destruction of the second Jewish temple. And inside of the arch are the depictions of the articles that they took out of the temple 
prominently seen there even today is the menorah and the silver trumpets and other articles. The second Jewish revolt in one, between 132 and 135 A.D. was put down brutally by the Romans. But during that revolt, the Jews struck a coin and it depicted the facade of the second temple and the ark inside of the temple. Hemper Aden, built after the destruction of Jerusalem, after the second revolt, built a pagan temple on that mount, tried to erase every memorial of the Jews. And then the Muslims came. 1614 A.D., the Muslims conquered Jerusalem, the Persians, and uh, Heraclius then recaptured the Jerusalem from the Persians, the Crusaders coming down uh, from the Roman Empire, uh, capturing Jerusalem from the Persians, and they built a church on that site on the Temple Mount. Then Jerusalem was recaptured by the Muslims in 638 A.D. The Dome of the Rock was built in 691 A.D. on the Temple Mount, probably on the very site of the ancient temple. Then the Al-Aqsa Mosque was built on the southern end of the Temple Mount. Both of those mosques still stand there today. In 1099 A.D., the Roman Catholic Crusaders came back and they massacred the Jews and they massacred the Muslims and they built their churches again on those sites. Then in 1517 A.D., the 400-year Ottoman Empire began. The Muslims had control then for hundreds of years, control of that entire part of the world. In 1541 A.D., the Muslims built a cemetery in front of the old Eastern Gate or Golden Gate, thinking that that would keep the Messiah out of the Temple Mount. In 1866, the Jews became a majority in Jerusalem for the first time in 1,200 years. They were coming back. They were longing again for the control of their own homeland. Between 1917 and 1948, the Jews were forbidden access to the Temple Mount during the British mandate, when the British were in charge. And only silent prayer was allowed down below at the Wailing Wall. They could pray, but they couldn't say anything. And they certainly couldn't blow their horns and whatnot. In 1931, the British gave the Temple Mount to the Islamic Trust. They still control it today. The Jews, finally, in 1948, were able to announce the creation of the new state of Israel, May 14, 1948. But at that time, they did not regain control of the Temple Mount. Here, Life magazine that year showed elderly Jews fleeing Jerusalem ahead of the Jordanian forces because Israel had to fight for its life in the War of Independence. It was not until 1967 that Israel conquered the Temple Mount during the Six-Day War. And for the first time in 1897 years, Israel controlled the Temple Mount, but only for a couple of days. Moshe Dayan, a couple of days later, and here we have uh, the chief minister of the Israeli Defense Forces, Shlomo, Shlomo means Solomon, Gorin, arriving at the liberated Western Wall. They blew the, the, the shafar, they blew the horns, they celebrated. But then just a few days later, Moshe Dayan, a secular Jew, an unbeliever really, returned control of the Temple Mount to the Palestinian Trust for political purposes. In his mind, the Temple Mount has nothing to do with Israel's future and what we need today is peace with the Muslims. In 1967, the Temple Mount faithful established an organization with the goal to rebuild the Temple. Gershon Solomon was one of the soldiers that captured the Temple Mount. He is the leader of that group and they're making preparations for the building of the Third Temple. And then in 1986, the Temple Institute was founded with the same goal to prepare for the third temple. And they're preparing all of the artifacts that are needed 
for the operation of the third temple. In the 1990s, the Muslims began to foist the temple denial myth that uh, claiming that the Jews never controlled the temple, that there was no Jewish temple ever on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. This is similar to the Holocaust deniers claiming that there's never been a Jewish temple on that mount. In 1996, the Muslims uh, destroyed, began destroying artifacts from beneath the Temple Mount that they had unearthed there in an, in an effort to erase every evidence of Jewish history in that place. In 2005, the Sanhedrin was reestablished, and all of this is in preparation for the rebuilding of the temple. In 2007, a $2 million menorah was dedicated and uh, built with 95 pounds of pure gold and uh, an artifact uh, that they planned to put in the third temple. And today it sits out in a public place just a, a short, just a stone throw from the ancient temple waiting for the rebuilding of the third temple. That building is imminent. The Bible tells us that the return of Christ for His church, for church age saints, is imminent. We're to expect it at any moment and uh, to be ready at all times. And that third temple is always mentioned in Bible prophecy in relation to the Antichrist. Not Christ, but the Antichrist. The coming of Christ is something that lies just ahead of us. And He will build a millennial temple on that spot. And it will glorify Jerusalem as the headquarters of the millennial temple. So Jerusalem, the most important place on earth.